Okay, so welcome back. Um, today we are going to go ahead with part five in my series where we help you to understand this device here. And this is a computer power supply from a desktop computer. And it is a power supply that follows the ATX specification. And these are extremely common. And more importantly, a lot of the functionality of these power supplies is used in many, many, many different electronic devices. We have buck converters, we have power factor correction, we have pulse width modulation, we have all kinds of things that are very, very similar. And if you understand those basic concepts, which we've been trying to show you in these uh, videos, uh, it really can help you to understand how a lot of devices work. So um, I encourage you to look at my, uh, the rest of my series, the previous four videos, um, there's a playlist, Understanding ATX Power Supplies, and um, that playlist on YouTube, you can jump back and forth to different um, videos in the playlist. It makes it easy to look at, so I encourage you to take a look. And also, if you like any of these videos, I have over 220 videos on this channel, and I've been doing it for like six years, so I encourage you, take a look at the other videos. If you like any of the videos, give them a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell notifications, and most of all, let others know that we're here so we get some views. Honestly, the previous four videos in this series, two years ago I was doing them, and I've gotten maybe 200 views on each video in two years. It's kind of crazy, but... Um, I appreciate it if you let other people know so we get some views so I'm not uh, just wasting time. So in this video, we are going to look at one part of this. And in the previous videos, we looked at the section down here on the bottom. And this is where you get your 100, in this case in the US, 120 volts RMS, 60 hertz, comes in through the wall outlet. And it comes into this section here. And here you've got your power factor correction. You've got your overvolters protection we talked about, which is an MOV, metal oxide varistor. And we also talked in the previous videos about what is on the other side of this wall outlet that comes from your power company and how they have devices that are very similar to these devices. And we talk about what's the purpose of these devices and all of that. So I encourage you to take a look. Uh, we're also in this video going to use LT Spice to simulate this circuit. So I encourage you to look at my videos on um, how to use LT Spice. It's a free software where you can simulate electronic circuits. Really wonderful. So um, we're going to start. This is the input circuit. We've already talked about this. This is the bridge rectifier. And here's a big capacitor. And at this point, it converts our 120 volts RMS or 170 volts peak sine wave into a DC of 170 volts with a little bit of ripple, and it feeds that into this switching transformer. And the way this transformer works is it uses these MOSFETs to fire this transformer with a PWM signal. And that PWM signal is from one of these ICs, integrated circuits down here, that controls the firing of the MOSFET based on what the output voltage is. If the voltage is low, it changes the firing of this, uh, the MOSFET to, to um, have more current through this transformer. And over here is the secondary of the transformer where we generate the 12 volts DC, the 5 volts DC, and the 3.3 volts DC. And then over here we have another circuit board that uses this integrated circuit right here, which is called a supervisor circuit. And we talked about that in uh, another video about uh, debunking power supply myths. People don't really realize that they have this um, protection. The ATX specification requires these protective circuits that monitor the output going to your computer. And if, if bad things happen, it will shut down the MOSFET so that you're no, no longer producing voltage and it shuts everything down. So I encourage you to look at that video too. But in this video, we're going to focus on this transformer and the MOSFET and the circuit the integrated circuit to fire this so that we can generate from our 170 volts with ripple, we're going to generate 12 volts, 5 volts, and 3.3 volts. So here we are in LT Spice. Now, if you haven't used LT Spice and you want to learn electronics or else you want to verify a circuit you've designed to make sure it works before you hook it up, I really encourage you to learn LT Spice. Now, I've done a bunch of videos where we've used it in a design 
Um, I've also got a LT Spice Beginner to Expert series that should help to bring you up to speed on how to use it. Again, it's totally free, absolutely wonderful piece of software. I encourage you to learn it uh, because you can do stuff like this. You can hook up a circuit and see if it works the way you think it should. Really wonderful piece of software. Now, what we've got here is a subset of the circuit we looked at in the previous videos in this series. Now, I've got four other videos where we looked at a uh, complete circuit of our ATX power supply. And in the previous videos, we focused over here on the left-hand side of this circuit. And that's basically uh, what I call the front end of the circuit. It's where you take the wall outlet voltage, in our case in the US, 120 volts RMS, 60 hertz, with a peak of 170 volts. And uh, previously we showed how most ATX power supplies have filters and over voltage protection in the form of MOVs or uh, metal oxide varistors that protect your equipment and also uh, protect the electric company from noise that you might generate in your power supply from feeding back into their system. So we talked a lot about not only your house wiring, but also the power company, what they've got on their side that you need to be aware of uh, when you're applying stuff to your um, power supply design. So everything here from this V in to the left, we've already talked about, right? So you've got 120 volts coming in and it's basically a full wave rectifier. Again, it goes through a bunch of filtering we talked about previously, but you've got your full wave rectifier, some RC network, and basically what you're going to get out of here going into this right hand side is about 170 volts DC, of course, with some ripple. We're going to, in this video, look at everything from this V in here to the right. All right, we're going to assume we understand how you get the um, 170 volts DC with a little bit of ripple, and that's going to, be the in, going to be the input to this circuit here. Now, this circuit has basically three components that we're going to look at. Um, if we zoom in here, this right here is what's called a buck converter. And we've talked about it before, a uh, very important and very common uh, piece of circuitry used in electronics, which basically is going to take our 170 volts and bring it down to an output that's going to be about 12 volts DC, a regulated 12 volts DC. And it does it using this transformer here, a diode, a high side diode, a low side diode, an inductor, and a capacitor and then you've got your load, right? So we're going to talk briefly about how this works. Again, it's a very standard piece of um, circuitry that takes a high voltage and bucks it down to a low voltage. Now, we've got two windings. Normally in your ATX power supply, you've got a 12 volt winding, a five volt, and a three volt. So it provides three separate DC supplies. Here we've got the 12 volt supply on the top, the second one is unused, but you can hook that up and make it a five volt and then have a third one for three volts. But for simplicity, I'm just using a 12 volt uh, winding, all right? Now, the way the buck converter works is you've got this transformer with DC coming in and you may be aware that transformers don't work really well with DC, right? You've got to have a switched alternating current for the transformer to do anything on the secondary. So the way you do that is you take the 170 volts DC and you switch it using this MOSFET. So you're basically going to be getting an on-off uh, kind of a pulse width modulation through this transformer. And with that varying uh, current and voltage, you can then generate voltage on the secondary. How do you make this gate switch on and off uh, with a pulse width modulation? Well, you come down here and we're going to use this um, linear technologies. Uh, it's called an LTC 3873. And you can look in the linear technologies website and it's got a data sheet. And we'll look through that in a bit. And also this model is included in LT Spice. So all you have to do is uh, select it and drag and drop and we're all set. So we'll look through the details of this, but I just want to go through the, the circuitry. Um, this basically is going to provide a PWM switching to this MOSFET. 
the way it does it is it first has to decide what the output voltage needs to be so it can vary this PWM signal to switch the MOSFET so that you get the correct voltage. So it needs a feedback circuit. And you can see right here, we've got these two uh, resistors in kind of a voltage divider. Here's our output voltage of our 12 volts, and it's got a 90K resistor and a 10K resistor. And it's tapping off the in between those, and it's coming into this FB or feedback port on the LTC, right? So the big players here are the feedback, which tells the LTC3873 what voltage we want to maintain on the output. And this end gate is the result of the PWM signal sent by this to switch the MOSFET on and off. Now, the output voltage, the way it knows what voltage you want is it uses this equation. It takes the 90K, which you see here, divide by the 10K, add one to that, and multiply times 1.2, and that tells the LTC what output voltage you want to maintain. In our case, 90K divided by 10K is nine. Add one, that's 10. 10 times 1.2 is 12. So we're telling this IC, maintain 12 volts. It's gonna take that and go through its magic, and it's going to generate a PWM to maintain 12 volts. So with a higher voltage, if it's above 12 volts, and we wanna bring it down, we're gonna change the duty cycle to something lower. And if it's below 12 volts, we're gonna to have to increase the duty cycle to, to give it a higher average voltage. And it's a really simple um, way that this thing works. And we'll look at this in a bit. Now, the other uh, values here, of course, we got a VCC. I'm just going to give it a 9 volt supply. Um, these others you can look at in the um, documentation. Run and soft start. This causes the response of this LTC. If you pick the correct capacitor, it will slow down the response to make it smoother and not make a quick jump and maybe make uh, higher voltages, higher transients. Um, I, they normally say use a 0.1 to, to use a soft start. I don't want that. I'm just going to use a 0.001 to make it respond very quickly, just so we can see it. Um, I program is going to zero. I threshold, we've got a 2.2 nano capacitor. You can look at the documentation for that. And then ground for ground. Um, this SW, um, there's a couple ways you can feed it information basically is giving you proportional to the current going through this MOSFET. One option is use this low resistance um, resistor and feed the voltage across it between it and ground to the SW, or you can just measure from across the MOSFET. Again, we can look at the documentation to get the details on that. But basically that's it. We've got our buck converter being switched by this MOSFET. And we got a feedback circuit to say, hey, I want 12 volts. And the output of this circuit is a big capacitor and a, a large, fairly large resistor. But I've got this other circuit over here. And what this is going to do is this is going to use an LT spice switch. Now, I talked in another video about LT spice switches and how to set them up. But basically, it just uses a pulse voltage source to turn this on to close the switch and we're going to after 10 milliseconds you can see down here it's going to close the switch and apply this 2 ohm resistor to give it a big heavy load so we can watch the response of this to see if it maintains its 12 volts and if this um, PWM controller um, responds in a way that maintains our 12 volts. So basically it's going to switch this on if it's 2 ohms and 12 volts, that's going to be 6 amps going through this, which is 72 watts. So we're going to put a 72 watt load on our 12 volt supply and see how this thing responds. So here I've uh, started running the simulation and I'm, here I'm measuring the V out, which is right here. And at 10 milliseconds, we're going to close the switch and apply the load. And there you go. There's the load being applied. And you can see it starts out at 12 volts. Uh, it takes like a millisecond or so to 
to fire this up to get to 12 volts and it flattens out at exactly 12 volts and here we apply the 72 watt load and you can see instantly the voltage drops to about 10 volts and then starts to recover and that's because this um, PWM controller is going to is sensing hey the voltage is low I need to change the duty cycle and um, get that voltage uh, back up to 12 volts. Now was it successful? Here we can see that it's a little bit over 11 volts so um, this doesn't quite get back to 12 volts so there's going to need to be some tweaking of this circuit to give us back to about 12 volts. But the basic concept is there. You've got a 12 volts, you apply a load, and this um, PWM controller sees the uh, change in output voltage and responds by changing the um, PWM signal to the uh, gate of this MOSFET. So now let's stop this and take a look at what signal is uh, being supplied to this gate of this MOSFET to turn it on and off so it can respond to this um, output voltage. So we'll pause it. And I'm going to go down here and measure the gate voltage. And this is the PWM signal being applied to the gate. You can see the voltage is a little bit high, so it shuts off. And then it's a little bit low, so it comes back on. A little bit high, so it shuts off. And now it's continually on. And let's take a look right here at where we turn on the heavy load and see what happens to the PWM. So you can see here when we're right at 12 volts, the PWM, the duty cycle is very small. But then it starts to drop below 12 and says, hey, wait a minute, we got to increase that duty cycle to give us more voltage, give us more average voltage so that we can get our 12 volts back. And you can see now it's going up with a like a 50% duty cycle trying to bring this back to um, 12 volts. Very interesting. One of the great things about... Um, LT Spice or similar types of software is you can actually look at all the different components, see what they're doing. Okay, so I think that's it for this one. Uh, again, if you like any of these videos, hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications, and please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.